Well, good morning, Impact family. Welcome to Church Online. My name is Marichelle. And I'm Daryl. Well, who would have thought, hey, waking up this morning and uh, being directed on a three-day lockdown. So as you can see, church, we're here in a church auditorium and we had to rush back on a Friday afternoon so that we can record an online service for you today. And, you know, I'm so grateful that we can have this platform and and still connect and gather and, and worship together online. And so I'm so grateful for that and our team. And so, Daryl, what are you thankful for? For. Well, I'm thankful that we still get to reach out to the people out there, yes. even online, that we can still get the message across, we can still get it out to mm. people. Mm. That's fantastic. Yes. And you know, one of the things that we want to encourage you, church, in this um, time, as, as you know, people are saying that this coronavirus is now on the, the, the 70% and, and more potent than it was before. Can we just encourage you this morning that we are to be a people of faith, yeah. not fear, um, driven or anxiety driven you know um, fe being fearful is one of the unscriptural behavior that a, a Christian believer has so um, we encourage you to just pray and as we saw on um, one of the Facebook posts you know anything can happen in three yeah. days and so just ask Jesus so we want to just um, we want you to know that um, that God is not perturbed by what's happening in our world. He knows and He is still in control. We are to be a people who are kingdom-minded and we are to be a people that are faith-filled. So That's right. why, don't we, why don't you tell the people about how to share this link? Well, you can share your link below and you can comment in the taskbars. You can share it with friends on Facebook. You can even watch us on YouTube. It's fantastic. But for those that are new, We'd like to give a special welcome to you. Yes. And below on the screen will be a link, a link tree link, and that will link everybody to our website, all the information about our yeah. church and how you can connect with us and how we can help you get connected on the journey that you're going through. Yes, yes, that's right. Well, before we kick off um, for some praise and worship this morning, hear an amazing word from our lead pastor, Tony, um, and get your heart settled. Um, we're going to have communion today. So if you haven't already done so, why don't you prepare yourself um, some juice and some biscuit, and we're going to have communion today awesome. straight after Pastor Tony's service. But before we do that, why don't we just pray for all our people right yeah. now? And yes. so um, that'll be an appropriate thing. I think so. Yeah. So Father, we just thank you in Jesus' name that you are all over this. I pray for every heart and for every home this morning that, Lord, that they will feel your presence no matter where they are. Lord, that these circumstances will not prevail, but, Lord God, that you are all over it. And, Lord, there is every reason um, that we can still be thankful. And so we just ask that you will settle every person's heart this morning and that, Lord, we can enjoy some, some praise and worship and hear an amazing word today. Yes, Lord. So, amen. Amen. So, why don't awesome. we stand up to your feet? Let's stand to your feet and join with our creative team as we give all the praises to God this morning, and we'll see you in a little while. See you soon. Good morning, church. Who's ready to be in the house and praise Jesus? I know we are. Why don't you put your hands together? Because I need you to help us praise God this morning. Hey, family online, good to see you. Join us for worship this morning. Let's get on the way. Oh, yeah. Here we go. This is the day that you have made. Whatever comes, I won't complain. For oh, my heart is in your name.
Oh, come to the altar 
Well, good morning. What an amazing time that we can have some praise and worship this morning and giving our thanks and our offering unto God. You know, I'm so grateful for our technology today. And if you're just joining us online right now, if you just tuned in, want to welcome you to our online service. And we are so thankful for you that you can join us today. Well, I want to just give you a brief thought around our uh, giving moment this morning. And it's found in Deuteronomy 8.18, where it says here, it says that, Remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you the power to be successful in order to fulfill the covenant He confirmed to your ancestors with an oath. You know, what I got from that scripture is so... Um, is, is realizing that God is our source, that God is the one and gives us the power to be successful. So in your success, in your wealth and in your health, that you must pause to remember and give thanks to God because He is the one that gives you the health and wealth and to give you the ability to, to earn money. And so in that, as we're in that um series of the power of gratitude you know my heart is overflowing with thanks with an attitude of praise and thanksgiving to God because really gratitude is is it's the fact that gratitude is not known until you show to show it and so 
part of my gratitude is an expression of giving to God. Um, the Bible teaches that it's 10% of our wealth, of our income. And so today, and I know most of you have already given. And so today, if you haven't already, just know that God is your source, that God is the one who is has given you the ability to produce wealth. So never forget that. And so what we want to do today, and you know, obviously we have um, our online is our preferred method of giving. And so you will find that on our website. Um, you can click on the link there and then it will show you on the, the many ways that you can give. But I just want to pray for your church. Thank you for your consistency, for your contribution in moving life forward, in moving family forward to this year. And we know that your contribution doesn't go unnoticed and, and God is is always our source. So let me just pray for you. Father, I just thank you that for everybody who has given, for everyone that has their heart set on you, that we will know that you are our source and our provider and that we will never forget um, to remember you in all of our wealth. So we thank you now in Jesus' name. Well, thank you, church, for um, for that. Um, if you have any other um, questions around our giving, make sure you go on our website and we'll be able to help you um, find your way into how we give. Thank you. Here at Impact Church, we offer simple and secure giving through one-time giving or scheduled recurring giving options. By accessing our website, which you can reach at www.impactchurch.net.au and clicking Give Online Now, this allows you to make a one-time donation of any amount or set up a recurring giving. You have the option to set this up for a duration of your choice, as well as which day it is given from your account. There are many other ways to give online, such as text giving, giving through the mobile app, and direct transfer giving. Whether you are joining us in person or online, thank you for your generosity and enjoy the service. Hello church, great to be with you today and privileged to have the opportunity to speak to us all uh, in our online community uh, today on the power of gratitude. We started this thought last week and we looked at some very powerful truths about the power of gratitude. And the first truth that we established uh, is this, is you are the only one, you are, you are the only one that is responsible for and able to control the gratitude in your life. Nobody else has that power. It's yours, it's mine, it's ours individually to host the power of gratitude in our world. We looked at several points of what gratitude does for us, the power of gratitude that releases uh, into our life. And we established these truths that gratitude changes who you are. It changes who you are uh, as a person. A spirit of gratitude will change what you see uh, in life. It will change what you say, and it will also change who you do life with because like attracts like. Your kind determines your kind. So gratitude, we established the platform that gratitude is such a powerful force in all of our lives and that's why we're taking a few weeks just to focus on this key thought of gratitude. Well, a lot happens in 24 hours. You know, 24 hours ago, uh, in terms of our community, things were rolling along quite smoothly. Uh, we'd entered 2021. Uh, we we're all kind of tiptoeing into 2021, uh, like walking on eggshells or glass, and, and we were being a little bit cautious and precautionary in the way we proclaimed what we were believing for this year. Uh, we as a church, uh, we, we decided to hit the reset button and uh, in terms of how we approach this year and reset the, the, the vision for the year to be the same as last year, which is moving life forward, moving family forward. And then here we are today. Uh, we've had the announcement from the Premier uh, of our state here in Queensland and uh, the health officer and director in Queensland who has put us in lockdown uh, for uh, three days to, to really just get on top of this uh, uh, new form of the virus that has made its way uh, into our suburbs. And we're really hoping and praying that with this slap in the face kind of uh, approach that uh, the leadership of our state has taken 
thinking that we can conquer this thing quickly uh, so we're not housebound. Uh, we we want to see you in church. Uh, we really do. In-person services are so highly valued uh, by our leadership team. Um, but we, we appreciate also very much our online community. And of course, today we are all online. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it's a verse we've been looking at uh, over the last couple of months really because it just unpacks such a powerful truth uh, for us in terms of this pandemic moment, this pandemic season that we find ourselves in. Paul says this, he says, no matter what happens, no matter, no matter what happens, always be thankful for this is God's will for those who belong to Christ Jesus. I love Paul's thought and strength of thought here, where he says, no matter what's going on, no matter what your situation or circumstance or season might be, no matter what your emotions are telling you or your feelings are presenting to you, he says, no matter what, always be thankful for that's God's will for all of us who are believers. The same verse in the NIV translation uh, says it this way. It says, give thanks in all circumstances. Give thanks in all circumstances. I want you to note that uh, we're to be thankful in everything. We're not thankful for everything. Uh, it's, it's just unhuman. It's, it's, it's not even possible uh, for you to be thankful uh, for everything, but it certainly is possible to be thankful in everything. To do it in and not for uh, are two polarizing uh, kind of thoughts. And I want to suggest to you today that we need to embrace a whole lot more of this, being thankful in, uh, not thankful for. I'm not particularly thankful for the fact that we've got a three-day three day lockdown, that, uh, you know, if there are things, things may even get worse. Who knows? Uh, I'm not thankful for that. I'm not thankful that we have restrictions and isolation uh, once again. I'm not thankful that uh, we can't meet in person for services and, you know, family contact is limited. I don't think any of us are thankful for that, but in it, I'm choosing to be thankful because the Bible tells us, Paul writes to us and says to be thankful in all things, that is the will of God for us as a believer. You see, I'm not thankful for rejection. I'm not thankful for hurt. I'm not thankful for pain or grief or abandonment. I'm not thankful for any of those situations and and emotions that we have come our way every now and then as, as human beings. I'm not thankful for the injustices of life that I see take place. But being thankful in all circumstances, that's a different thing. Because the power of that is it protects us from bitterness. It protects us from complaint. It protects us from criticism and condemnation. Uh, it protects us uh, so much and so important not to become bitterness, uh, full of bitterness because bitterness kills our spirit. Bitterness, bitterness minimizes our opportunities uh, in life. It reduces our stature and our posture. And so bitterness is not good at all. It's not good for our health. It's not good for our relationships. And you know, the truth is we can become bitter about so many things if we're not careful. We become edgy and, and, and full of rage about so many things that are going on in our world uh, and our lives. Um, unmet expectations, broken uh, promises and dreams, uh, friends or families or, or, or co-workers or, or position in life can cause bitterness to be presented to us as an opportunity. And I want to suggest to you, do a John West, reject it, throw it away. It's not good for you to have bitterness in your mind, heart, mouth, or spirit. So gratitude. You know, gratitude really contains the thought of expression. Um, when I think of people that are full of gratitude, they're expressive people. They are people that are lavish in their, 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 their posture of thankfulness and, and praise. And, and they're really out there. They're, they're really out there in terms of presenting uh, the thought of gratitude. And that's because gratitude embodies the idea of engaging ourselves uh, in the expression, the expression of gratitude. You see, gratitude is something that we express and others experience it. We express it, others experience it and feel it. And so if the people in my world are not feeling it, 
If the people in my world are not experiencing it, that's because I'm not as verbal and demonstrative in my expression of gratitude. So I want to encourage you today, stir up your heart, stir up your spirit to be really demonstrative in expressing gratitude to your family, to your friends, uh, in terms of your faith, to the house of God, to God himself, uh, to people all around your world. You see, the truth is gratitude is not known until it's shown. It's not known until it's shown, until you say it, People can't see it. Until you say it, people can't see it. You see, people often assume that others know that I'm thankful. That the people in my world, they know I'm thankful for who they are and for what they do. But the reality is they can't know it. They don't really know it until you show it, until you say it. So it can't be known, it can't be felt, it can't be sensed until it's expressed. And I just think we need to get a whole lot more expressive. A whole lot more expressive in our gratitude, our display of gratitude, our disposition of gratitude. You know, the Bible says so much about it, so much about it. And it really speaks about the truth that, you know, God himself doesn't even know we're thankful until we say it, until we show it, until we display it for him. And, and we're encouraged uh, in the Psalms particularly, because the Psalmist, he, he's kind of like the guy that agitates and stirs everyone up to really praise God and bring their best and be on their A game when it comes to gratitude. And in Psalm 100, one of my favorite Psalms, um, he talks about, uh, you know, coming into the house of God and coming into the presence of God with a spirit of gratitude. He says this, you can pass through his open gates with the password of praise. Another version says the password of, of thank you. And then he says, come right into the presence of God. Come right into his presence with thanksgiving. Come and bring your thank you offering. Bring your thank offering to him and affectionately, affectionately bless his name. I love the, the response, uh, demonstrative nature of the language here that the psalmist uses about waltzing into the presence of God and coming with praise and thankfulness and a heart full of gratitude. And he says, come and bring your thank you offering. Come and bring it and bless his beautiful name in such an, an affectionate way. It speaks this to me, that gratitude is not quiet and it's not reserved. Gratitude is actually noisy. Gratitude is actually very noisy. It's noisy because it's expressive. It's, it's kind of like that loud cousin that we all have, uh, that one that sits at the table and, and talks loudly and laughs loudly and ruckusly and, and shares and tells jokes and tells stories. Gratitude's like that. It's out there. And can I encourage every single one of us today to get your gratitude on for 2021? I know it's not started particularly well, uh, but we're not in control of that. But what we need to do is in everything, give God thanks. In everything, be thankful. Be thankful in every situation and every circumstance. And don't be quiet about it. Don't you be going quiet about your gratitude because gratitude is verbal, it's visual, it's vocal, it's, it's, it's bold. You know, in Colossians 3.15, in the Message Bible, it says this. It says, let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other. Some real key thoughts here for us uh, as we enter this new year uh, as a church. It says, let the peace of Christ keep you in tune. Uh, don't get out of tune with each other. Keep, keep you in tune with each other. In step with each other. That's important. It's important to be in step. In tune, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing. Well, I think we should underline that. I think that's a, a powerful thought for 2021. None of this going off and doing your own thing. Uh, be, be in tune with each other. Be in step with each other. Be in sync with each other. And then finally, Paul says this, and cultivate thankfulness. Cultivate thankfulness. You know, thankfulness is, is really something we need to explore. It's something that we need to sow towards. It's something that we need to develop, to uh, be intentional about, something that we need to 
uh, enhanced in our world, in the way that we do our, our life journey. And so Paul says, cultivate it. Cultivate gratitude. Cultivate gratitude in yourself and of yourself. Cultivate gratitude in terms of your relationship with God and the faith journey that you're doing with God. Be thankful to God for all things. Cultivate thankfulness for the life you have. Be thankful. It may not be perfect. It may not be pretty. It might be messy. It might even be ugly. But in all things, Paul says, be thankful. Cultivate thankfulness. That's hard to say, cultivate. Cultivate thankfulness in your relationships for the people that matter to you, that are in your world, that love you, your family, your friends, and ultimately also your church. Make thankfulness a way of life. Make it a way of life. Make it how you live. Make it what you'll be known for. Make it your natural response. I want to highlight and and look at a a few verses uh, from uh, the Gospel of Luke about a story that really epitomizes the heart and the power of gratitude for me. And I want to share uh, from this story a few thoughts today. So Luke chapter 17 and verse 11, we're going to read through to verse 19. It says, as Jesus continued on towards Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. And he entered a village there, 10 lepers, note the number, 10, 10 lepers stood at a distance crying out, Jesus master, have mercy on us. And Jesus looked at them and said, go show yourselves to the priest. And they went and they were cleansed. Note this, they were cleansed of their leprosy. One of them when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus. Ten healed, one came back to say thank you to Jesus and shouting praise to God. He fell at the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking Jesus for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. It throws that in there for our interest. We'll come back to that thought in a minute. This man was a Samaritan. And Jesus asked, didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? You know, there's, there's a lot of thoughts that are here for me in terms of giving thanks to God for the situations and circumstances uh, that God uh, brings and does and works out uh, in our, our lives. In this story with the lepers, it says that Jesus told the lepers to go and show themselves to the priest uh, before they were healed, by the way. They weren't healed. But on the way of their obedience journey, they were healed as they went to see the priest. So they were cleansed on the way. So they weren't cleansed until they moved. I want to suggest to you today that there's a lot of things in our life that don't happen until we move. Until we move in the direction that God tells us to move. Until we go the way God tells us to go. Until we do what God tells us to do. uh, Until we obey the instructions that he gives It's not until then that we find the blessing. The blessing doesn't come until we move. And so for some of us, we just got to move. We've got to move towards the direction of what it is that we're believing God for. Whenever we move in the direction of what we're believing God for, God does powerful things. You see, God meets us. He meets us in the gap of his word and our response to his word. In other words, he meets us between the problem and the answer. Between the problem and the answer. The problem for the lepers was they had leprosy. The answer was healing, but they had to go and see the priest. And on the way... On the way, as they obeyed God and did what God told them to do, they found healing. From this story today, I want to share one observation, and then I'm going to share just quickly four quick challenges for us today. My observation from this story is this, is that the people who have the greatest reason to say thank you often seem to be the worst at it. The people who have the greatest reason to be thankful, to live thankful, to say thankful, uh, thank you to us, are often the worst at doing it. Uh, In this story, we only have one leper out of 10 that came back and returned and said thank you to Jesus. And it highlights of this one that returned to say thank you, that he was a Samaritan. In other words, he was different to Jesus. He was different to the other lepers. He was a Samaritan. The Samaritans and Jews didn't get on at all. They, they, They hated each other, literally. And yet he, the Samaritan, came back to say thank you to Jesus, while the other Jews who were lepers, they walked away. They walked away in their own direction. 
you know, it's often, I think, the thought that the people that should be the best at saying thank you in our world are often not good at it. Often not good at living with that sense of gratitude. I mean, think about it. We've been blessed with every spiritual blessing. We've been blessed with God's presence, with his Holy Spirit, with the precious blood of Jesus that's forgiven us of all of our sins. We should be the most grateful people on the planet. And yet oftentimes, my observation is, oftentimes Christians aren't. Oftentimes they aren't. And we need to really intentionally focus on our gratitude primarily towards God and then out of that overflow towards each other, towards other people. It's just a reality that God's own are often not good at giving thanks. I think that's why the psalmist says, come on, come on, come into his presence with thanksgiving. Come into his courts with praise uh, and, and, and approach God that way with the secret password of thank you and, and bring your thank you offering to the Lord. You know, it's often our own people that are, I guess, not as demonstrative as they should be in showing their gratitude and thankfulness. And I think it's because of things like familiarity. I think it's just, it, you know, it's what we do every week. We come to church, we, we see the people we see, we, the family we have around us, the people we have around us. And we're just so familiar with each other sometimes that the thankfulness doesn't flow as much as it should flow. The gratitude doesn't flow as much as it possibly should be. And it's often because of the, the, the closeness of relationship that we share and that we have. Don't allow that to diminish the responsibility that every one of us have to be thankful and to show our thankfulness to God and each other in a very visual way. Uh, you know, Hollywood, I, I think Hollywood is so good at uh, having uh, uh, an atmosphere of gratitude. They really are. Uh, the, Hollywood, Hollywood is so good at celebrating. They're so good at celebrating their stars and, and the people in Hollywood world. They honor, they acknowledge, they reward each other. They roll out the red carpet, they give big speeches, they dress up, they take photos, they, they, they give out awards. And, and, and sometimes I think God probably sits back and looks at that and thinks, uh, where's the red carpet for me? Where's the red carpet for me? Uh, I think God could probably think that way. Uh, uh, where, where's the praise that should be there? Where's the worship that should be there? Where's the thank you offering that should be there? Where, where's the connection that should be there? Where's the contri tri contribution that should be? I think God sometimes could look at Hollywood and think, why doesn't the church get it like that? Why don't we get it like that? Let, let's get our gratitude on because here's the deal. God is worthy of our constant appreciation. He's worthy of our constant worship and adoration and affection. And that's why the psalmist says, come into his presence and, and worship him and praise him with genuine affection and, and bless his magnificent and wonderful name. You know, our appreciation it needs to be verbal, it needs to be visual, it needs to be vibrant. It needs to be verbal, visual, and vibrant. It cannot be silent, it cannot be quiet, it cannot be undisclosed. It's not done in secret, it's not done in private. There are some things that are private, but this is never private. Thank you can never be done behind closed doors. Thankfulness is something we do together with each other to honor God. So. That was my observation. My challenges start with this. Number one, we need to stop seeing gratitude as an obligation and start seeing it as an opportunity. An opportunity. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't ever want to feel obligated to show my gratitude. I want to see it as an opportunity to show my gratitude towards the circumstances of life, the God that I love, and the people that are in my world. You see, gratitude is not something you have to do. Gratitude is something that we get to do. We get the opportunity to show thankfulness to the people and the God that we love. So I get to do this. I don't have to do it. I don't have to. I, I get to be a gracious person and a thankful person. You know, when, when you have a, a heart of gratitude and you serve God, it, it changes the way you serve God. It changes the way you serve God. It's not out of obligation. It's not out of servitude. It's out of love. It's out of commitment. It's out of adoration and affection uh, for Him. I want you to notice the lepers, that they were all healed before they expressed their gratitude. Before they said thank you, they were healed. So in other words, their healing was not dependent upon their gratitude. And so their gratitude was not an obligation, it was an opportunity. And it was an opportunity that only one of them realized. Nine of them missed it. 
Don't be one of the ones that misses it, please. Be the one that grasps the opportunity to have a sense and spirit and uh, uh, space of gratitude around your life. You know, the walk back, the walk back, I'm not going to do it like the moonwalk, the walk back, the walk back to Jesus that this one leper took, he walked back when the others walked on, the walk back to Jesus was an opportunity, not an obligation. He walked back full of thanks. Everyone knew it. Everyone would have seen it on his face. Everyone would have heard him whistling and singing and dancing and praising as he came back to say thank you to Jesus. Only one leper walked back, nine walked away. Here's the truth. We all walk. We all walk. We all walk every day. And the way we walk and the direction we walk displays whether we have a spirit of gratitude or a spirit of entitlement. So how's your walk? Because your walk talks. Your walk talks. And so make sure your walk talks and talk the walk in the direction of God, the lover of your soul, in the direction of Jesus. My second challenge is that we'd stop thinking of gratitude as a byproduct of circumstances and see it as a worldview. See it as a worldview. In other words, I I, I don't just have a heart full of gratitude because my circumstances are all all good. It's all pretty. It's all perfect. It's all wonderful. That's not gratitude. Gratitude is in all things. Gratitude is no matter what, no matter what, no matter what happens, give God the thanks. You know, the the, the truth is that if, if gratitude was a matter of byproduct of circumstances, then all of the lepers would have returned and said thank you to Jesus because they all had the same healing. They all got the same outcome. They all got the same result. But the truth is gratitude is not about your circumstance working out. It's not about the situation going the way you might want it to go. Gratitude is about a pattern. It's about a pattern. It's about an attitude that we build into our lives about who we want to be, who we want to be, how we want to walk, how we're going to talk, how we're going to express ourselves, how we're going to have others experience us, how others will sense us, how others will read us or feel us. And, you know, the truth is there's an atmosphere, there's an ambience, there's, there's, there's a feeling that there's a vibe Um, there's a sense of weather that follows every one of us. I wonder what the people that are around our world uh, say of us in terms uh, of this. What's our reputation in terms of, of gratitude? Don't be the kind of person that just, you know, waits for something good to happen before your gratitude shows up. Always put your gratitude on. You look better when you wear it. You look better when you wear your gratitude rather than your grumbling. Don't wear your grumble. Wear your gratitude rather than your grumble. I, I, I love the thought. We, we looked at it before in the verse uh, in Psalm 100 where it says, uh, bring your, your thank you offering uh, to the Lord. And I made this comment last week. I want to make it again that, you know, our tithe, uh, honoring the Lord with 10% of our income and everything that our, uh, uh, the, uh, our wealth uh, that our land produces, like the Bible says, when we honor God that way, when we say thank you to God that way, that, that literally it's our thank you offering. It's our, it's our moment of gratitude uh, for God. I want to encourage you, don't be a neglecter of that. Don't be an avoider of that. Don't be someone that withholds in terms of that. Part of the pattern of our worship is not only the praise of our lips and the lifting of our hands and the dancing of our feet and the kneeling of our knees, the bending of our heart. Part of the pattern of our worship is the tangible expressive nature of the thank you gift that we bring to God. Psalm 34 says this, it says, verse 1, I bless God every chance I get. My lungs expand with his praise. I love that picture, that that word picture. Uh, Lungs expanding with praise to God at every opportunity, at every moment we get. And so the thought is, before you ask God for anything, make sure you're thanking for everything. Before you ask him for anything for this new year, make sure you're thanking for everything from last year. Come on, you survived last year. You, you, you got through 2020 when you didn't think you would. You're in 2021 now. It's a new year. Uh, I know it started a little bit ordinary and a little bit rough, but uh, we're believing to break out of this zone very, very quickly. Don't let it spoil your gratitude and, and uh, the way you, you, you see this new year. My third big challenge is don't let anyone sow a seed of blessing 
Don't let anyone sow a seed of blessing into your life without them reaping a harvest of your gratitude. In other words, share your blessing and say thank you. Share your blessing and say thank you to people. In other words, when you're blessed, bless back. When you're blessed, bless back. You see, gratitude and generosity, they go hand in hand. They're partners. They walk together on this faith journey uh, in our hearts, our minds, and in our lives, uh, that we would have a a spirit of gratitude and a spirit of generosity uh, working together. Don't ever become so familiar with uh, God's um, blessing and favor and goodness that you fail to appreciate it, that you fail to acknowledge it, that you fail to represent it to other people people. Don't become complacent about it. Don't become complacent about that blessing or even that sense of entitlement uh, about it, but continually refresh and find refreshing ways to to reset your gratitude uh, barometer uh, in in your heart and and in your life. Be the kind of person that's easily surprised. Be the kind of person that's easily impressed. Be the kind of person that's easily overwhelmed with the generosity and the gratitude that others uh, show you. Uh, Be that kind of person. Don't be the one that's hard to impress. Don't be the one that is never impressed. Don't be the one that is never overwhelmed or that is never surprised. Be the, oh, I can't believe you person. Be that person. Be the super surprised personality uh, in terms of your gratitude. Fight and rage, rage against familiarity in your life because familiarity breeds contempt. It's an enemy and it reduces the value of everything. Appreciation is diminished by familiarity. And so be someone that appreciates, that appreciates, not depreciates the things around your world and your life. Number four, my fourth big challenge is this. It's it's in regards to our our conversation. Uh, Fill your conversation with expressions and words of of gratitude. Uh, Don't make the mistake of only talking about your feelings and talking, being driven by your feelings. Don't speak out of your feelings because feelings are not a good director. They're not a good master uh, that we, we, we serve. Talking how you feel all the time is a poor level, a poor level to live at because feelings uh, are often fickle. They're often fickle, they're inaccurate, they're not always true, they don't tell you the truth. They don't tell you the truth. And so don't be led by your feelings, be led by your faith and lead your feelings with declarations uh, of, of truth. Like the psalmist, he says in Psalm 103, praise the Lord, I tell myself. I wonder what you're telling yourself. I wonder what you're telling yourself in this season or, or your season. What are you telling yourself? He says, praise the Lord, I tell myself. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, I tell myself, and never forget the good things that he's done for me. You know, we want to sing it. We want to shout it. We want to declare it. We want to decree it. We want to proclaim it. We want to prophesy it. We want to pronounce it. We want to preach it. Uh, the good things that God has done. And we want to remind ourselves together, collectively, we want to remind ourselves of everything the Lord has done and everything that we are thankful for. You know, gratitude, it's an attitude of knowing that you're blessed beyond what you deserve. You're blessed beyond what you deserve. I'm, I'm blessed beyond what I deserve. We as a church are blessed beyond what we deserve. Every one of us today, that's our testimony. We're blessed beyond what we deserved. We're blessed beyond anything we're entitled to. We're entitled to nothing. And gratitude appreciates everything that God does for us. And so we're on a walk. And my question for you as I draw to a close today is, Will your walk be a walk back to Jesus? Or will your walk be a walk that separates you from Jesus? Will you continually walk towards him like that one leper that returned to say thank you? Will that be your pattern? Will that be your lifestyle? Will that be the journey that you take? Or is your walk taking you away from the things of God, the person of God, the house of God, the value of God, the worship of God? Make sure you walk in the direction of the things that you're believing God for. And so my closing question is, am I going to walk on? Am I going to walk on once God has done what God does? Or do I walk back? 
Am I going to walk on once God has done what God has done for me? And you know, God has blessed me. God has enriched me. God has satisfied my life. And am I going to walk on and, and just do my own thing and, and, and live in neglect and familiarity? Or am I going to be one that walks back with just a broken heart and a thankful heart and a full heart that, that declares my thankfulness to God and the way I live and the person that I become? And I want to encourage you to walk like that. Walk like that. Because when you walk right back, when you walk right back to Jesus, when you walk right back to the one that does everything for us, then your life is so much brighter. It's so much brighter. It's so much lighter. My joy is greater. My confidence is higher. Gratitude is such a powerful, powerful thought. There's so much power in having an attitude of gratitude in all things, no matter what happens, I will give thanks to the Lord. Church, that's my encouragement to all of us today. Pray that's blessed you. Pray that's helped you today, blessed you and your family and your household. And uh, today uh, uh, online, if, if you just need to get a little bit closer to God, you need to say yes to Jesus today uh, for the first time. If you've not said yes to Jesus and asked him to come into your heart, forgive you of your sins and make you right with him. Uh, can, I, can I just say that that's exactly what God wants to do for every single one of us. Uh, just like he healed the 10 lepers, there's healing that God wants to give for all of us in terms of our life. And it begins with uh, dealing with the sin issue in our hearts and in our world and in our lives. And if you want to say yes to Jesus today and receive Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior and follow him and live thankful towards him and have a heart full of gratitude for what he uh, has done and what he will do, then I'm going to ask you to lift up your hand where you are, nice and high. And I know I can't see you, but you're online. And, and by lifting your hand, I also want you just to, in the comments section uh, on, on the page, I want you just to comment and just say that you said yes to Jesus. And, and one of our team will follow through uh, with that. But I'd love the opportunity to pray for you today as we draw to a close that God would come and do good things in your heart and in your life as you say yes to Jesus today. Father, I thank you for my family and friends online today, for our church and for uh, people that are uh, new to our church today online. I'm praying, God, for those today that are saying yes to Jesus as they, in their own home, uh, acknowledge you, lift their hands, say yes to you right now that you'd come in uh, by your precious Holy Spirit. Lord, forgive people's sins, make them whole and do good things in their life and help everyone to live with a heart and a spirit of gratitude. Father, bless us today uh, in our community, in our city, as we uh, just deal with this whole COVID situation and circumstance help us to come through strong and to be kept strong and in all things no matter what to be thankful to you is my prayer today in Jesus name amen to conclude our service today, church, we're going to take a moment just to share communion uh, together. And uh, Pastors Daryl and Marichelle uh, asked you uh, when they were doing the hosting moment to just pre-prepare your uh, communion at home so we could share communion together. I've got mine here, and if you get yours ready at home, you know, the whole concept of communion is about being thankful to Jesus for what he achieved for us and what he did for us, what he means to us, what he represents for every one of us when he died on the cross of Calvary and rose again three days later. Because it was by that act that our lives were redeemed, our hearts were saved, and were made right with God. There's no other way it could happen. The only way it could have happened was with the perfect offering, the perfect sacrifice, the perfect Lamb of God coming into our world to redeem us and you know the cross and and the fact that Jesus did that and died for our sins is something it's a simple truth that we never want to neglect we never want to avoid we never want to forget we never want to become overly familiar with it that it causes its value to be diminished in our lives in actual fact we want to promote it we want it to escalate we want to promote the truth of it and the reality of it and live in the experience of it every day and so every time we take this little bit of biscuit or bread and this bit of juice together as a church or as individuals or as families what we're declaring is the life that Jesus has given to us and the promise that he has fulfilled for every one of us and it's with full hearts today it's with grateful hearts and hearts full of gratitude 
that we say thank you, God, for everything that you've done. We love you, we value you, and we appreciate you. Let me pray for you today before we partake of these emblems. Father, we thank you today for the bread and for the juice, the bread that represents the broken body of Jesus and the juice that represents the precious blood of Jesus that flowed for the forgiveness of our sins. We thank you today. Our hearts are overwhelmed with gratitude that you've done this for us because we could never do it for ourselves. We thank you for the amazing power that it releases into our lives to live well and to be the best version of ourselves that we find in you through what you've done for us. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's partake together of the biscuit first of all, representing the precious broken body of Jesus. Also the juice today represents his precious blood. And uh, as we drink this juice today, uh, we, we literally are drinking, the Bible talks about the presence and the life of God uh, into our own soul. And so as we partake of this juice today, uh, we're sharing that life that God has given for us. and we're, we're thankful for it and remembering it. Let's partake together. Amen. Well, I want to thank you so much for being with us today in our online uh, service. We're going to hand back now to our hosts, Pastors Daryl and Marichal, uh, to give some closing comments for our service today. Thank you so much for celebrating with us today. Look forward to seeing you again uh, soon. We'll be sharing news in terms of our in-person services and, and things getting back to normal or whatever our routines will be. Thank you. God bless. Privileged to be with you today. Well, what an amazing word from Pastor Tony it this awesome. morning. Um, I just think ugh, the power of gratitude, um, there's always something to be thankful for. And um, I hope that spoke to you as much as it spoke to us this morning. Yes. You know, there's so much to be grateful for, even in the midst of the circumstances, which is where we are in right now. And, you know, one of the things that I got from there is that, um, you know, gratitude contains a thought of, of expression and that mm. gratitude is not shown, or it's not known until it is shown. Wow. So, you know, why don't you comment below and to see what you have actually um, learned from this, more, this today's message. So if the message is spoken to you today, you can comment below or if you have a prayer need, you can comment below in this feed and we will get someone to pray with you and possibly even be able to contact you to help you with your journey of what you need. Yes, yes, definitely. And everything you need to know is on our website, yep. which you can access through our Linktree link. Mm -hmm. And it will give you all the information, all the access you need about our church in every area we live with church life. Yeah, that's amazing, Daryl. And, and, you know, we will keep you posted on what's happening in Church Life. So make sure you are subscribed to our Facebook page and all of our social um, platforms and turn on the notification bell. So every time we uh, put our new post up that you'll be notified right. and uh, make sure you like and share our Facebook as well. Well, it's time to sign off. Yeah. So you have a blessed week. Yes. We hope to see you next Sunday. Yes. Hopefully it will be in person again. Yes, and stay connected and bless someone and show gratitude yeah. for the people in your world and that are surround. Make sure you are vocal about your gratitude this week and make sure your gratitude also stays up, which is um, mm. to God. Yes, exactly. So we look forward to seeing you next week. See ya.
Well, what an amazing word from Pastor Tony this morning. Um, I just think 